Now we're going to be looking at the validation rule for email. Now, it's a good idea to have is not null in anything that is necessary. And most things are going to be necessary because, again, for data to be useful, it has to be complete and accurate. If the data is not present, it's not complete, right? So this is the validation rule here. I am going to go in and explain this very, very quickly. I'm also going to include a video from another YouTube channel. This guy explains it really, really well, amazingly well. So I'm not going to take too long on it. So I'm going to open my database and show you what needs to be there. I'm going to go to my customer table, double click on that. Here I have my fields and I do have an email one here. I'm going to go to view, design view. I'm going to go down to email. Now I already have my validation rule in. What I've decided to do is say is not null. That means they should not be able to leave this empty. This is slightly different from what I had on the PowerPoint. But again, is null means that it can be left empty. It's up to you whether or not this is a requirement. So let me just quickly show you. Is null says you can leave this empty. Is not null says you cannot leave this empty. I've put an and here. So it cannot be left empty and it must be like this and not like this. So I'm going to quickly explain what this means and what this means. So what this says is that this section in here, the star means it can be any character, any character, numbers, letters, whatever the case is, right? Typical emails, but it must be at least one character. And that's what the question mark is. Then we have the typical at sign, any number of characters again, but at least one character. Then we have the dot, which is normally dot com, dot co, dot uk, dot ac, dot uk. Then again, we have any number of characters, but at least one character. So typically, as I've said, dot ac, dot uk, dot com, dot co, dot uk, dot org, whatever the email is. Then I have an and as well. It cannot be like this. Then this last part says it cannot have a square bracket. It cannot have a comma. It cannot have a semicolon. So again, I'm going to put the link in the description. I changed my validation rule slightly because I wanted something slightly different from what the video on YouTube had, well, the other video on YouTube had, and this is what I want in mind. So when I go to my database and I test this, well, hopefully it works. Let's save all of this. I'm going to put in random first name, random first name there, anything for phone number. As you can see, I'm typing and it's not allowing me to type anymore because my validation rule has been set. If I go to email, I'm going to try to leave it blank for now. When I go to the next one over, I'm going to put, I don't know, three there. When I move down, there we go. Silly human, please enter an email address, blah, 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 right? So you have your validation rule and you have your validation um, text as well. Let me try entering an email, but not like the way I said. So let's say ASD, right? And if I try to move on again, I should have the same error because I did not put the at sign and then should be at gmail.com, for example. If I try to move on again, I should still have the same error. Yep, and let me try adding the dot com. Still the same error, because I need something after the at, but before the full stop. So let's try gmail.com, and there we go. It works perfectly fine. So this should satisfy most email addresses. It's not gonna be every single one, um, but that should be good enough for now.